Hello, I'm Pastor Frederick K. Price Jr. and I'm really excited about uh, what we're getting ready to uh, partake in. I have a few friends with me here. Uh, we're going to have a discussion and I believe it's a, a discussion that's going to be uh, well received. I believe it's going to be beneficial to the body of Christ. And I'm, once again, I'm just really excited about what we're getting ready to engage in. And so I want to introduce uh, some of my friends here, starting with um, this gentleman to my left. And your name is, sir? I'm Dan Glazer. I am a Jew, and I have accepted Christ as my Messiah. I was raised Jewish, didn't understand what even a Christian was all about. Then the Lord led me through this. I have accepted him, and I'm learning new things all the time, and I'm here just to share what I've learned over the years, and I'm excited about it. My name is Pastor Tim Cray, Phoenix, Arizona, Fire and Faith Ministries. Definitely excited to be here. My name is Pastor Seiko Woods in Sugar Land, Texas. Uh, friends with this well-known and beloved brother, Frederick Price, and I'm glad to be here this afternoon. My name is Brother Alfonso Neal. I'm a member of Pastor Woods Church, His Word, His Way Fellowship. Uh, I was born and raised uh, in the Catholic Church, but Lord saved me years ago. Uh, the more I learned about the different doctrines that they were teaching that were not lining up with Scripture, the Lord saved me, and now I've just learned the Word of God and doing what I can to Amen. please Him. Amen. Amen. Well, we got those pleasantries out the way, didn't we now? Yeah. yeah okay, so uh, why, why are we here again? Um, Pastor Seiko Woods, yeah. we've done this before. We, we've been here before. Very familiar with it. Uh, and the word war has has been thrown around uh, yeah. around the set yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Um, what does that mean? Uh, could, could you tell the people? Well, we had, uh, you and I was trying to figure out a, a catchy way of bringing attention to what we were trying to accomplish. And so we were uh, getting some thoughts together, ideas together. And so one day I said, hey, man, you know, uh, I think I got it. I got it. Uh, war. And he's like, OK, war. Yeah, we already got those camps already doing that. What do you mean? Great. Word of faith and reform. And so uh, it just stuck with us. And so we, we did the first session, uh, I believe, back in June. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe I think I won. But, you know, still waiting on the jury right. to be back on that right. one. But most of the jury knows me personally. So no bias, but just got okay. that home court advantage, even though I'm not from L.A. And you weren't at home. Absolutely. And the key word was think. Um, <laughs> so, but here we are. We're continuing this, and um, and you had a you had a panel idea, mm -hmm. or where we could bring some friends together yep, yep. and have a discussion. And I really think that this is probably going to be as exciting as what we did last time was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like where we where we're headed with this. Yeah. Um, now there's so much we could talk about. Yep. So many subject matters that we could throw out there, mm -hmm. but I believe there are a few that we could talk about today yeah. um, briefly. And we've got ministers and, and, and uh, seasoned uh, scholarly believers here. So mm -hmm. uh, is it really possible for us to not be long winded? <laughs> we'll attempt to, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, to we'll subdue see. that. Yeah, that right? We'll see. But um, <laughs> I figured there was a few subject matters that we could discuss mm -hmm. now um, for our audience. Uh, there's some things that we differ on. Yeah. I believe there's a lot more that we agree on. Yep. But healing, prosperity, uh, God's will, mm -hmm. God's will versus man's will, mm -hmm. I figured these are some of the things that we could talk about. Yeah. And I kind of want to save God's will for the end because okay. it's, it's ultimately it's the foundation of it yep. all anyway. Yep. Yep. Uh, and I think that that's how we could bring it home. I figured we could, you know, start off talking about healing. <clears throat> Let's share our thoughts on healing sure. uh, from the scriptures. Sure. Um, of course, let, let the text be the final authority yeah. we've all had some experiences but yeah. bottom line you know we're going to let the text absolutely. be the final authority totally agree. so from a and and once again we said word of faith and reform is yeah that's how people identify with this exactly i don't walk around with a word of faith t-shirt on i don't go right. around saying hey right. guys look i'm word of faith exactly let's exactly. take over there he's reformist i mean nobody's right. doing that right. but you know for identity exactly exactly, exactly. so uh, healing um Gentlemen, what are, what are your thoughts on, on healing? I believe, I've said this on your show, mm -hmm. uh, that I believe that it's God's will um, that all his children be healed. I know that all his children aren't healed. I know individuals have died in their sickness. <coughs> um, and we can talk about reasons for why that is, mm -hmm. but it, it hasn't shaken my belief in that. And I think primarily the main reason is because of what I've seen in my parents' life. 
I've seen them sick and I've seen them healed. Right. I mean, every time they've been sick or been attacked in their body, they went to God in faith and, you know, God granted their petition. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what I've been exposed to, right, you right, know, right. and maybe everyone hasn't been exposed to that. And so maybe sometimes experiences do shape <coughs> your doctrine or mm -hmm. shape your theology. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's kind of where I stand. But, you know, let's delve into the scriptures and see, right. you know, what we can find. So I'm going to take the real on this one. I'm going to see what everybody else wants to say first before okay. I just do what I do. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, I know for me, um, when you think about healing, you know, we all know since the fall of man, <clears throat> sickness and all other types of things came into the world. Uh, man was made perfect. You know, since sin came into the world, now we all eventually will die because mm -hmm. of that. But when you come to the area of healing, and I know we all differ on that. Right, um, right. I believe, you know, again, God heals if it's in his will to heal. We can pray, uh, but ultimately the decision is up to him. And like you said, Brother Fred, uh, there's been people in my family who have been healed. My father uh, was healed of cancer through prayer uh, from our church and other people. He was healed. He wasn't a believer. He, I mean, he wasn't he's not a, Yeah, he's not a believer. Uh, but he's still healed because I believe that that was for God's will yeah. to heal him. Now, does that mean that I'm going to not pray because of what, Lord, whatever you decide to do, you know, I'm going to let you handle it. The Bible makes it very clear that we should be praying for healing. It also tells us to anoint, you know, bring the elders aboard and anoint those who are really sick. But when it comes to, do I have the power to heal somebody through my prayers? No. But do, does God give us the uh, command to pray for his will to be done in healing? And that would be where I would leave it. Okay. Um, I would say 1 John 5, 14. Uh, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, 15, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. So then the question is, what is the will of God? Because uh, uh, it said, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And uh, uh, all throughout the Old Testament, as well as the New Testament, uh, there are, uh, you, you know, I, I am the God that healeth thee. I believe last night we talked about, or, or one of the gentlemen brought up, uh, Jehovah Rapha, I'm, I'm the God, your healer. Of course, it's not just talking about physical healing. We talked about different kinds right, of healing right. that that involves, but it does include uh, uh, that. So in the word of God, again, we would just have to determine what is the will of God because it, it's, it's very plain that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm a believer that his will is his word. His word is his will. Uh, if, if you find it in the word of God, you can say that that's the will of God. And so uh, 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 if, 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 if healing is in his will, which Jesus mentioned it several times, that was one of the reasons why he died. Uh, we discussed that last night as well. Uh, uh, several scriptures, Isaiah and Peter. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, if, 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 if our asking is in the will of God, then I believe that that would be granted to us as a result of us asking. Dan, any thoughts, Dan? <laughs> well, I see, a, uh, especially when you go back to the, the law, and you see the blessings of the law by following you, blessed going out, blessed coming in, blessed be your, right. your women will give birth, and if you don't heed these, Cursed will be your, your crops. There won't be rain. You know, the wombs will be <coughs> closed up. So I see it as an opportunity, especially for healing, always as a time for sharing of the gospel and repentance, which I think from Genesis 1-1 through uh, was it Genesis 1-27, uh, God spoke and it came into existence. I don't think anyone's going to argue with that point. God spoke. And then he created man, and he said for us to subdue the earth. How do we subdue anything? Was this, and the, the only thing we've had to base it on was him speaking forth. So I think, just as he said so many times to those who uh, have been healed, he says, your faith has made you whole. Was the faith always spoken, or was it the faith that, that was in him? I think a lot of this has to do with the whole repentance part and the turning that we that God says turn to me so I will bless you turn to me and these are all throughout I mean Jeremiah you can read it all through the old scriptures so I like to see the point of 
I'm going to go in, lay hands on someone, and I'm going to believe, you know what? That you are healed in the name of Jesus. Now, you have, is God's uh, will necessarily the same thing, his will for healing, the same thing as a guarantee of a healing? I think we could just step forth in faith and say, hey, I'm going to pray for him, and I'm believing he's going to be healed. Your father, I'm not, not a believer, I don't know if he is now, but, but you know what? There's a testimony. So God used that. I think God wants us to step out in faith and lay hands on people. I think more people would be healed if we went out in faith and laid hands on people. I think for me, um, <clears throat> the question regarding healing, I think it's twofold. Number one, uh, is healing provided for the believer in the atonement? Was it accomplished by Christ on the cross? Uh, guaranteeing that a person would be healed because they are a believer um, versus uh, the person that is a believer. This individual is suffering sickness. Uh, is this person, can this person write a, a blank check and say, okay, just because I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a child of God, I am guaranteed the right to be healed. I would say this, that healing is provided for every new Testament born again believer, regardless of your ethnicity, regardless of your background, if you're under the blood of Jesus Christ, that has been provided for you in the atonement. Is it promised? I would say no, because we have several scriptures that would, that would attest to that fact that you had uh, believers with no faith that were healed. You had believers with little faith that were healed. And of course, obvious, those with great faith were healed. For me to say that it is guaranteed for the believer uh, that God guarantees healing, regardless of whatever the issue is, or even to try to attribute uh, sin to sickness, uh, their, Scripture would even fly in the face with that argument as well. I mean, John, John 9, the man born blind, the obvious question was that the Jews thought, and what was actually taught during that time was, uh, who sinned that this man was born blind? His parents or, 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 or him? And Jesus responds and says, neither. This was done so that the works of God may be made manifest. So I think sometimes God uses, you know, sickness uh, for judgment, but he also uses sickness to bring us closer to God. David said himself, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have kept that word. Um, you, you have these accounts where even in James 5, we all know the text. Uh, if there's any among you sick, let him pray. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't say anything else. He doesn't say uh, call for the elders and say that he says that you know you, you know suffering you know, it, it, it becomes more of a I guess a gradual process depending on how severe the the illness is none of us in this room would want to suffer any kind of malady of any kind I know I don't I mean I, I had the uh, I had a stomach virus just a couple of days ago before I got here and it wasn't a good look at all for me uh, I don't like being sick I don't like seeing my wife or my children being sick uh, but like Brother Alfonso said, we live in a sin-filled society. The, the, the world is cursed. Sin is a result, or sickness is a result of sin. I just, just, I just a quick question for you. Sure. So do you have any problem walking into a hospital and just laying hands on people and just praying and believing that the Lord can and will heal them? I have no problem with that. The, the problem that I have is me telling a person that God is going to do that when I don't know the mind of God. Kind of like now to piggyback on what, what Brother Tim was saying, that uh, it's God's will. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. God says, who knows the mind of the Lord? Who has been his counselor? I, I don't know what is the secret things that belong to God. That's, that's, that's hidden from me. What I do know is what his word it, it's, it describes for us. No, it's interesting you saying that because and our take is that we believe that when it comes to healing, that it's not a secret thing. We, we, we believe that, and we talked about it with Mark 11, 23 and, and mm -hmm. 24. Mm -hmm. uh, even with the scripture uh, Fonz mentioned over in James, let the elders of the church lay hands right, on him. Right. Um, and it's interesting to hear both of you say why you believe sickness is, is here. We, we believe the same thing mm -hmm. in that it's the result of sin. Right. We know sickness wasn't here before the fall. It wasn't right. here. It wasn't in the garden. It wasn't in the right. earth realm when sin wasn't here, but mm -hmm. it is here as a result of sin. And, um, you know, we, we believe that the healing is available. 
And I believe that if you appropriate the scriptures and you appropriate the word of God properly, because I believe that we can, we, we can, our lack of understanding could be a hindrance to us in reference to the scriptures. Okay. I believe that we could pray incorrectly. Okay. Um, you know, I, I'm a stickler for, for praying in the name of Jesus. Some people just say amen <laughs> and believe that, you know, heaven heard it. You know, mm. I, I think whereas God is, you know, he's the same yesterday, today and forever, but then his mercies are new every morning. I mean, God is just a manifold, right. multifaceted God, mm -hmm. you know, but I believe that I look at the scripture as whatever is clearly written mm -hmm. is not a secret thing. I agree. You know, that's how I see it. Absolutely. And, and so um, <clears throat> that scripture that you mentioned, you know, the, the man that was born blind, mm -hmm. uh, I believe that what the scripture is saying in verse three of John chapter nine is that, you know, if, if you look at, well, we'll start with verse one. It says, now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth and his disciples asked him saying, Rabbi, who sinned? this man or his parents that he was born blind. Now right. you and I both agree right. that sometimes a translation with chapter and verse designations mm -hmm. and bad chapter breaks <laughs> and punctuation marks and things like that, um, because of those limitations, it may not always do the original autograph, the original uh, writings justice. I believe here in verse three, what Jesus was saying was, Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that that was the end of that thought. And what he was saying next was, but that the works of God should be revealed in him, I must work the works of him who sent me. Okay. You know, that's what I believe that he was saying. Now, you know, I can't guarantee that, but you know, if you look at the way it's written in the English uh, translation and you know that English has rules, mm -hmm. you know, the rules have been broken here in English. If you look at verse three and you look at verse four, if you, if you read verses one through four, mm -hmm. the rules of English have been broken and there are sentences in there that don't make sense. They're not complete thoughts. Okay. The so question would be what, what does the original manuscript say this verse would that be the well, well you're right I mean I mean what what does the Greek say it says in leading along he saw a man born a man blind out of birth the birth is the de is, is the is the de designation on where it originated from it's, it was from birth it was nothing that basically right but 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 we agreed right yeah he was born into a sin filled environment but according to the law of Moses which that that's all they knew spoke about that these <coughs> sins will be passed on mm -hmm. so that was a, a perfectly legitimate biblical, if you want to use the word term biblical, mindset. So it was a great question and that's all the Pharisees asked were a but lot of questions. Would, if, if that was the case, then Job suffered a lot. His three friends... Was Job after the law or before the law? Well, it was before the law. Here's the question. Whether it was before the law or after the law, all scripture is inspired by God. The things were written in earlier times, Romans 15, 4, were written for our learning. So you have Job... Foreshadowing of the things to come. I'm sorry? Foreshadowing of the things to come. Well, Romans 15, 4 says, whatever was written aforetime was for our learning, so that we, through the comfort and, and perseverance of the scriptures, may have hope. That's what it says. But, so the but, purpose but of what we are... it also says, these, it's a foreshadow. Things that in the Old Testament scriptures were a foreshadowing. Of, I mean, like the Passover is, is, the, you know, is Christ on the cross. I mean, there, we can see all these analogies. All, I'm, my only point in all of this is that in, was it Deuteronomy, was it 28? 29, 29. Right, 29, which uh, talks about the blessings and the curses, that there are... Well, secret things, rather. There are curses that came from the parents, and then I know later on it said, you know, uh, the children's, you know, teeth on it <coughs> for the, you know, the right. sins of the father. So this was a, a very normal mindset for them to think, to ask that question. Okay, but just because they asked the question doesn't make the question valid or right. The issue that I'm bringing sure, to Sure, sure. Why wouldn't it not be right? Because it wasn't right. Why Jesus, wasn't it right? Because Jesus corrected him. He I, said neither, neither, <laughs> neither issue so was correct. So are y'all saying mm -hmm. that the, the blind man, he was blind because of a result of the sin that man was placed with? Oh, no, Adam? not at all. All I'm saying is the mindset of the people that asked, they only knew, you know, the, the Old Testament scriptures. I mean, okay. that's all they knew. So right. they knew. And that's why Christ corrected them. But He's that, saying that, it's not because of what they've done. Not because right, right, but exactly. Right. But, but even still, they said, was this man blind because of one of two things? And Jesus said, neither. Right. Okay, but we know that the environment that we live in can produce some flaws. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, individuals are born <clears throat> with all kinds of things that aren't a reflection of the perfection of man because Adam and, and, and Eve, they, they didn't have any flaws. Right. But you like know. the word says, could it not be that, oh no, it is what it says, that, that God allowed this man to be blind 
for the purpose of that miracle being shown when Christ did it. Because That's we all know he, when he walked on this earth, he, he did many miracles and all that what the scriptures teach was ordained. The water into wine, healing the leper, all those things were set up for Christ to show his miracles. So the more, I, man being blind was for that purpose. All right, and, and I feel you on that, but, okay. but you're, you're looking at verse three as Jesus mm -hmm. answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. Okay. That's the purpose. Sin okay. meaning that was not the reason he, right, right. he was blind. See, what I'm saying right. is I believe that what Jesus was saying was Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. Bob, that's it. Then here's a new thought. But that the works of God should be revealed in him, I must work the works of him who sent me. I have no problem with that. That's not the issue. My, my issue is, is if we're attributing sickness of any kind because of what somebody did or because we, uh, well, because of what somebody did or, uh, my ancestor or you know in my past life sometimes God allows sickness to come for his purpose and his glory it does not mean that a person did wrong because a person is sick yes. Job did nothing wrong and in fact in chapter 42 of Job God says my anger is kindled against your friends because they spoke about me what was not right I never told them that the reason why you're going through this Job is because something is in your life that you did wrong no they spoke wrong of me my anger is kindled against them. You need to get them right because I'm about to come at them. So then are we saying that everybody who is sick or born with a, you know, a malady of some sort, that that was done because God one day is going to heal them? I, well, I'll answer the latter part of the question. I don't think that's one right. day God will heal all sicknesses. That's going to come in the kingdom. Some, matter of fact, it's even going to come in the millennium. <clears throat> You're going to get a snapshot of that. Ultimately, all sicknesses and diseases are going to be eradicated. Mm -hmm. So that's the will of God. Okay. So then you're saying the will, that so some people are born a certain way because be the God wants to get I, I would say I would say yes because the Bible teaches that as well. Just because a person is born deformed uh, or born blind. That's not his image. Well, we're still in the Imago Dei. It may be marred because when Adam sinned, his image is marred. But right. We're still in the Imago Dei. We're still in God's image. He would not have instituted Ab the capital punishment. But the whole thing about bringing Job into this, we know he was sick because of God, Satan. Right. God permitted it. Right. But who made the illness? It oh, couldn't have been. It couldn't have happened if God didn't allow it. Yeah, but God, 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 God allowed it. Okay, but see, but see, when, when, when you, when you, that's another topic we're about to get. Well, I'm just saying, when you make the statement, you know, he says, "All that you have is in His power." That was nothing new. Okay, what's your point? I'm just saying that was nothing new. It wasn't like he was saying it, it wasn't in your power, but now it is because I just said it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, it's been in his power since Adam sinned. No, no, no. Did, did Satan not, not take Jesus? Did Satan not take Jesus on the hill? Okay. He said he showed him the kingdoms of the world. Absolutely. And he said they've been delivered to me. Not a problem. When were they delivered? He's the God of this age. Right. And not when did problem. that happen? When Adam fell. So he's been the God of this age. But he's not, he is not the God. Absolutely. No. Right. Nobody's not in that, but, but, but Paul, right. Jesus twice said, the ruler of this world, world system, he's coming. Absolutely. All right, Paul <clears throat> said, God of this age, your world system. Do we agree that, that Satan can do nothing without the permission of God? I don't, about, I, don't, I don't believe that every time Satan does something, every single time he does it, it's because God permitted him, otherwise he can't do anything. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so, so you're saying that- In this earth realm. That doesn't matter. God, the, the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. They and all those that contain it. If God is not sovereign over all things, he's not sovereign at all. Bottom line, like, you can't, you can't, let's make it personal. Let's make it, let's make it, let's make it personal. But just thing. because the earth, it says the earth is the Lord's, mm -hmm. doesn't mean he's necessarily running the governmental system right now. Wait, 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 the earth and the world is too different. He's definitely not. The devil is. Okay, so wait a minute. Wait the minute. devil so, is. So you, so you guys are telling me, I'm going to make sure I'm clarifying what you're saying. Okay. Let me ask this question first. Do you gentlemen believe that God is sovereign? Let's qualify something. Exactly. exactly. No, exactly. Not a problem. Not because a problem. the word not a problem. is in newer editions of the scripture. Okay, it's not in the King James. And I'm saying the King James is flawless. I'm just saying right now, I mean, if I say pull up the word sovereign in scripture as it's attributed to God, where are you going to find that at? You may want, you want your baby to find Trinity. So what's your point? Okay. Well, the so, thing is you're so using. What is a sovereign? Sovereign. Sovereign means supreme what is a sovereign? ruler. Okay. Absolute so authority. Sovereigns, just ones. Merciful and gracious ones don't do whatever they want when they want just because they have the power. No, they don't. Well, we're, right. we're not talking about human beings. We're talking about a holy, righteous God that okay. does who's, whatever he who's wants. Who's more just right. than us, 
more merciful and more gracious. Let's, let's go back to the whole Abraham. Not tainted with sin. Let's go back to the whole Abraham agreement. In a flawed perception or, 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 or flawed judgment. Not a problem. What did God but tell is Abraham? Is that what you mean by sovereign? Do you mean just supreme ruler or do you mean supreme, lu- the supreme ruler over every molecule at every second of the day? God is sovereign over every single, solitary, minute detail. The, the sparrow does not fall from the tree apart from his father. Right, apart from his knowledge. No, 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 apart from his father, his heavenly father. That's what Jesus says. God's providence rules and runs this entire universe. If we don't have a God that is not in control of everything that happens, then what God do we have? Would the the cross have happened if if, if, uh, God gave man any kind of control over Christ going to the cross, that had to have been God. He had to do it himself. If you go back to uh, Abraham. I, I think this is where the will part comes in. Okay, we'll, we'll say that for later. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me ask going. this real quick. Because right, we're is, still talking about healing, right? Because if, if you said the earth is the Lord's. Yeah. And if it, and it so is. So is, is the earth the same as the world? This earth, this planet. Is the earth. This planet. The earth is the planet. The world is the system. The world is every, and he says, and all it contains. Okay, but again. So he qualifies the what he means earth by that. is ground. The earth is it's the terra, actual. Terra firma. Right. Okay. The world is not the same thing as the earth. He it's says the, the earth system. is the and Lord's and the fullness thereof. Okay, but let's qualify what the world is then. Okay, so is this a the, reflection? Of, so this heaven's mean. not run like the earth. Correct. Ain't none of this mess going on in heaven. Okay. So how could he- the earth be a reflection of the order of God? Right. Well, it we, can't be. Well, it can't be because it didn't happen in the beginning. It won't be like that in the end, and okay. it's not like that in heaven now. But we. But but it but it but it is on the earth. But we're but praying. God allows we're, all we're things praying, to work together for His good will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right. That's right. that we would pray for. When so we, we, so what's the will of God in heaven? Right. Righteousness. Holiness. What's is the will of it? God on any given subject in heaven? His glory. Uh, okay. That's what he's all about. Okay. He's all about his glory. Are there sick people in, in, in heaven? No. There's no so sin then in if that's the will There's of God no sin in heaven. In heaven. Right. Okay. Uh, are there poor people in heaven? No. Uh, are, are, is there abuse in heaven? Are there rapes in heaven? Nope. Is there murder in heaven? Nope. Is any of that in heaven? Nope. But Jesus said, on earth as it is in heaven, your will be done. Right. And what is the How can any here? of that be the will of God? Well, we, and any, I'm, and, and because you guys, you believe that God has ordained all things, which means he's decided beforehand. Absolutely. This, he intended it to happen. Absolutely. Not just allowed it, but Absolutely. intended it. So Absolutely. This, this, is, Absolutely. this is borderlining on when you're saying, so you got the man, the pedophile who rapes the young girl. Uh-huh. Now, was that, and we know the scripture says, you know, uh, uh, talks about the one who causes one to stumble. Or don't be mm-hmm. a stumbling block to someone else causing Absolutely. them to sin. Absolutely. So is the Lord God Supreme Almighty in his sovereignty having this act committed? Now we're stepping into God's sovereignty, man's responsibility. We're still responsible for what we do. No, but, but God we're talking is still about sovereign over there. Well, put a pin there because yeah. we, we, we went from... <laughs> See, this is our problem. That, yeah, this that, is that, our, that's problem. our problem. Y'all, y'all brought me in. It is real. Y'all, y'all, y'all want to drill us in? All right, all right, all right. So, ahead. I really wanted to say God's will, <laughs> yeah, the sovereignty yeah. aspect, all of that, yeah. Yeah. really for the end. So, okay. let's kind of just let's jump over to prosperity for, for a second. All right. Um, somehow, this term has become like a, a, a cuss word in the church. Yeah. You know, like it's foul language when we hear it. And, you know, how did we get there? How did rich prosperity and wealth become bad things? Uh, if someone is preaching prosperity, oftentimes they may be referred to as a wolf or they may be referred to as... Yeah, y'all's camp messed that up, Fred. Our camp? <laughs> yeah, what <well, no. laughs> Y'all's camp caught us that. Well, I mean, some, some of y'all are saying that basically it's not God's will for nobody to suffer any kind of thing. Poverty. Uh, See, and, 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 and that's, that, hey, that's one of the... It that's, is, bro. Yeah, I don't believe that that's his will, but I believe it's going to happen. Okay, so see, you can't separate the two. You you think that everything that happens, or you believe, in, and, and you'll take me to scripture to back it up, that everything that happens is his will. Well, see, that's what he wanted to happen. Okay, that's what he intended to happen. His, and, and his and, intent and his desire is two different things. But you talk about man's responsibility. Absolutely. But how is man responsible if God ordained it? Because man, I, I was set up for failure his, from the beginning. No, how was I? Your not? choice, your choice, Fred, is a still a real choice. It is. But if he's sovereign, over the problem. But here's the problem. The problem. The problem. What you guys want to do is, the, the, huh? <laughs> you're not a Calvinist, then. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, I mean, if you want to label me as that, I, I, no, no, I, no. You, that's what you've said. You are five point caliber. That's what you've said. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But then you can't be if you believe that. But go ahead. Tell you. Well, I can't be what. That that man has has his own. He still is making his own choices. Where, 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 have you, where have you heard any Calvinists that would refute what you just said? The sovereignty of God. He, I mean, it, 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 according to Calvinist theology, if you want to use that term, or Reformed theology, we teach and believe and understand that God is sovereign over all things, and yet man is responsible for the decisions and choices that he makes. But God ordained that, our choices. Exactly. God ordained the fall. God ordained the cross. So how can I be responsible? Because the Bible says we are. How, where? Acts chapter 2. Okay. We'll Christ has already been crucified. He's already been raised. He's, uh, he's ascended. Pentecost, chapter 20, I mean, chapter 2, Shavuot. verse 22. Okay. Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus of Nazarene, a man attested to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs which, which God performed through him in your midst, just as you yourselves know. This man determined, or oh, excuse me, delivered up by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God, you nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. Wait a minute. So I got God predestining something and then holding man culpable for what he predestined. The text says it right there. Then you have the Old Testament. I forgot. I always forget this guy's name. Yeah. Uh, Hold on one second. Yeah, get there to me. Get there to me. Uh, this, what does the text say? This simply says that God was, that, that Jesus was delivered up. Mm-hmm. Because According that, to was, what? that was God's intention. According to what? That was God's intention for According him to, to be. According to what? What does the word say? According to what? I just said it. He was delivered up, determined purpose and foreknowledge. God's God intended for him to be delivered up. Okay, so why are you arguing with me? So what does that have to do with them having taken Everybody him? Else. The text says it right by there. By lawless hands. The text, the text says it because you did it. But God predetermined it and used you as the means of accomplishing what he predetermined. Or is it possibly the other way around? No, it's not possible. The text makes it clear that it's not see, possible that see? way. See, and this is, and you're the nice guy. This is why I say you're the nice guy, because when you get into a conversation with a Calvinist, sorry, just like you have word of faith perceptions, mm -hmm. well, our reform perceptions is that we can't even get a word in because y'all know everything. Okay, I so, mean everything. Okay. It's like, it's, this is what it says, and this is what it is. Okay, but I would say eight out of ten Calvinists I speak who believe that God has scripted out. <laughs> scripted it. What happens? It's, it's all laying out like watching a movie so before him. Now? We're toys. Yeah. Well, well, right. Okay. We're toys. Macbeth. What about Macbeth? You know, you know the play? I read it. Oh. I think I saw the movie, I think. Um, yeah, you're right. I saw the movie. King list. Duncan. Remember King Duncan? Okay. Who killed him? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I said Shakespeare. We Shakespeare. talked something you know, uh, ah, post-1970. Ah. Shakespeare wrote the play, right? Right. King Duncan gets killed in the play. Okay. Uh, the murderer who killed King Duncan was held responsible, but Shakespeare wrote the play oh. that got King Duncan murdered. Who was responsible? So life's it's a life's life. Answer the question. About life's a answer the question. Life's a life. Then. I'm just asking you to answer the question. Li if if, if I, you're saying that God, I really don't have a will. Well, wait a minute. No, no, exactly. no. You, no, no. I really don't. Your will no, no. is the same will as God. You, 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 have, you, you have a will. According, according have to one. your question, yeah. who is responsible? Uh -huh. Shakespeare is responsible. Are you going to charge Shakespeare with sin? Or are you going to charge man with sin? You can't charge man with sin when Shakespeare wrote it. Why Shakespeare not? wrote it. God said he charges man with sin. Shakespeare wrote it. But you believe that God right. wrote, wrote Based it. Based on your example. They, they, God wrote it. they arrested the man who killed King but Duncan. Based on your example. Shakespeare wrote the play. Ha had Shakespeare not written the play, the man... That's th faulty logic. Then the it, it, it would be has, no Macbeth. It would be no King Duncan. But the man has no uh, other choice because his role has been scripted. So, so I guess what y'all are telling me is this. Basically what you're telling me is Go that... Go to an extreme. Go ahead. <laughs> what, what you're telling me then, I guess, is what I'm, I'm fearing to say, but I'm going to say it because this is the logical conclusion that you're bringing me to. Your, your logical conclusion, but that's okay. Okay, fine. Doubt I'll go there okay. with you on that. Okay. Your will determines whether or not God's will gets accomplished? Yes or no? I'm no. just asking. Yes or no. no. There, are, there are some things. Yes or no, Fred? There are some things. Uh-huh. Yeah. If, if God has a will for my life, but, but I, 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 I disobey, was that his will for my life? I'm in disobedience. I'm in sin. Was that his will for my you life? It was decreed and his desire. Was, was, that, was, that my, was that his will his for decree, my life? His decree will always, always come to pass. 
His desire for us is to live holy. Do we always live holy? Let's go back to Jonah. No, Jonah we had don't. a different will than God, but what happened? Jonah, Jonah eventually went. So what him. about, I said before Dude, this did it, day, did it force his will? life did and God, death. Did God go against his will? God's will never changed. Did he violate Jonah Jonah's will? Jonah just did not go forth with the will because he wanted to be stubborn. But at the, at the, in the end, he got to Nineveh. He just went, he t he went the hard way. In that particular instance, God gave him a, you know, the first known submarine ride, yes. Okay, wait a minute. Hold a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Daniel. Brother. Yes, sir. Was Jonah's will violated? Because he didn't want to go. He didn't want to go. I ain't going. Definitely. But he went. <laughs> but he went because God turned him around. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait so, a minute. So everything I do in my life. Uh, Fred. Everything I do in my life. Could you please consult your client and, everything and, that and, I do and, in my and life. answer this question? If Jonah's will was violated, because that's, that's what y'all are basically telling me, then when is it okay for God to be in control over what he's created? Well, let, me, let me finish my thought. The fish spit him up on land. Who told him to? Wait a second. <laughs> the fish spit him up on the land. Uh -huh. He still, maybe while he was inside and... Maybe? The, what, well, let's hear it we're out. We're still on God's will. Are we talking uh, about... We're know. supposed to be on prosperity. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you blame me. You, you blame my kind. I, yeah, oh, I, wow. I, I you might want to get back to the he whole one that, the, Okay. We, the we, can, we can talk about Jonah. Then. Real we need quick. A, we need a flag yeah, on the play here. <laughs> Who... Did, did God tell Moses that he was going to be the, the deliverer for the people? Yeah. Exodus Who 4. ended up doing it? What do you mean who ended up doing it? Who ended up doing it? Who, it wasn't just to deliver them out of Egypt, but also to bring them into the promised land. Tim, but you're asking. No, 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 no. Hold on. Who ended up doing it? I just told you. Who? Moses was the one that led them out of. It wasn't. He led them out. But who took them in? But oh, who did oh, God say Joshua would do it? OK, but who did God say would do it? Moses. Led OK, hold on. He said Moses would do it. Right. Moses disobeyed. OK. God raised up somebody else. What he okay. told Moses to do. And your point is? It goes right back to what you were trying to say, that if God can do I'm everything and he's the one that's stretching it there. How's that a stretch? How is that a stretch? I'll I tell you why it's a stretch. He said, you're going to deliver my people. Did yes. he deliver them? Out of the he hand also of said that he was going to take them into the promised land. And what happened? He disobeyed God. Did they still get taken into the promised land? Yes, they did, by somebody else other Not than who God said. His will will always be accomplished. But it won't be accomplished all the time through the people that he said if they choose to Are disobey. Are we talking about decree or desire? Which one oh, are you talking about? Oh, come on. I mean, come we... It's, it's, it's a perfect it's, example. It's Fred, thought, you are the, the pastor at this church, right? Yes. If God has a will for this church to do whatever, whether you do it or not, he can just move you out the way if you start tripping. But then that Somebody goes against else is what you in. just said about no, him being no, But we're talking about God's pastor. will. No, no, God has a will again. for this, this facility, this but church. Then he, but, but then you said it's God's will and his responsibility, right? He still has accountable for what he does if he doesn't do what God tells him to do. But the will of this church, if God has a certain it's, will for this church, still it's going to be different things. It's not two different no, things. No, no. They both coexist. They both coexist. And, here, and here's, here's, here's the problem because if you're saying that man's will dominates, it has the final say because who would want to violate man's free will? First of all, that ain't taught. I don't even, no want, I don't even want free will because I already know what I would no do. No one's Man's <laughs> will is, says, only is free. I said before you this day, life and death, blessing and curse. Is that dealing with salvation? Is that dealing with salvation? That was before We're not even salvation about was even salvation brought, brought right into. We're talking about choice right now. Okay, he, he tells us to he tells us to repent. We talked no, about no, that. No, in the no, car. no. Let's talk about that. I, I said go before there. you this day, life and death, Absolutely. blessing and cursing, and then he tells us to choose. Uh -huh. Then he tells us, I, I would that you choose life, Absolutely. but he still leaves it up to you to choose. The Jews who, had to accept the law, whether they wanted Absolutely. it or not. Absolutely, they had to accept it. No, they had to choose if they wanted it. Says, we'll do as you said. Who gives man the power or the ability to choose God? Answer that question, Tim. We're talking about election. God does. Huh. <laughs> what? God gives him. God gives them. God gives the man the ability to choose him, right? He gives him the ability to choose. But the children of Israel just to witnessed to ten, wait, ten wait, plagues. Wait, okay, wait, because I didn't give my ability to choose. I didn't give myself the ability to choose. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He says, I said before you, I'm, I'm quoting what you just uh, said. Uh, life, life I said before you this day, life and death. Choose life. Is not God the author of life? Yes, he's the author of life. I came that, that, might, that you may have life. Absolutely. Right. Okay, so he's making his appeal, just like Jesus did to Jerusalem. In Israel, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's making an appeal. Mm -hmm. He made the appeal to the church in Revelation two and three. It was still a choice of okay. Jesus, though. 
what was the prop the problem that I'm having with what you're saying about this whole choice thing is that you're still giving man the ability and the power to do something they can't do. Why? Because they're dead, bro. But why are we dead? If they, she, obviously God ordained us to be dead because you're saying God ordained everything, everything. but he told the man, don't eat from the tree. Okay. Don't eat from the tree. Mm -hmm. But he eats from the tree and you say God ordained it. Yep. Yep. Now you want to ask me why? Because he had Jesus. All I'm saying is God said, young man, don't eat that tree. In the day you eat it, not a problem. You will surely die. Absolutely. So Adam disobeyed a choice. Him. Absolutely. But, I, oh, but I realistically, he didn't have a choice. Well, because God has scripted it all, here, and He's decided here, beforehand. Here, here's, here's, That's what you're saying. Okay, so then how do we how do we interpret Romans eight twenty eight? What what, it, what it, let's define the word good. You want God to define works the word good. for the good. Mm -hmm. What is what is the good? Can we go to the beginning before we do all that good? God causes all things to work together. Right, right after you talked about intercession, okay. he causes, after you talked about he causes the Holy Spirit, all things to groanings. work together right. for good, and he qualifies who he calls it to work together for good for to those who love God. Okay, what what is the good part? What you mean? Whatever God says is good. It ain't what we determine is good. Well, we would you have, agree with that, Daniel? We have scriptures. We have scriptures. Hold on. Would you agree that we don't determine what good is? God does. Please tell me yes, Daniel. Please don't let me don't let me fall off this. Oh, off this couch. God <laughs> says through. I need that answer. Okay. Throughout the Old Covenant, we, it's full of what good is and what evil is. Who determines it? Right. God has showed us. He said what blessings were and cursings who were. Who determines? Sounds like he, he determines. Who it sounds, determines what good is? Does man determine what good is? Or does God, holy, righteous, just, merciful God, determine what good is? Please answer that. God has defined, He's defined what it. good is. So he determines it. He has defined what good is. Why but what I, but my, but cause my question for you is, is ask you, give me some examples of good. Is, is I gave paying my bills on time? Is having enough to of provide course. for my family? Is that part of good? Yeah. Is I mean, is slapping my wife good? Of course, that's a sin, dude. And it's jail time. Fred, do you have any children? I sure do. Do you have any boys? I got two boys. Do you think it would be good to kill one of them? Absolutely not. But God said it pleased him to kill his son. In order to save humanity. Right. But oh, you know, we're he's not the only one our So it benefits, the, it benefits, as long as it benefits but, but us, the, it's no, okay. No, he's the only one qualified. He's the, he's the only, only sacrifice qualified. So as long as it benefits yeah. us, it's okay then, right? right. Benefits us. You but come on, it, there, it, it, the cross so, benefits but, us? But wait a second. But, but is, didn't Jesus. <laughs> but wait a second. Wait a minute. But wait a second. Did it not benefit us? Sinful, filthy creatures? Haters of God? Why are we a hater of God according to your theology? Why are we a hater of God? I'm glad you answered that question, bruh. Why am I a hater of God according to God? God, theology. God gets glory in the saving and in the leaving of those that he has not chosen. Now, I know that's going to rub you the wrong way, but the moment you think for one nanosecond that there's any righteousness in any of us, any at all, that would make God want to choose any of our raggedy selves, but I'm raggedy. That's not even part the of reason, that's the reason. According to your theology, I'm raggedy because God wanted me to be. Well, here's, here's the problem with to that. To display his glory. That's, yeah. It's all about God's glory. Now, here's the thing. Do, you, let me, let me ask, uh, do we all agree that we're not as smart as God? God needs to display his glory before me. Well, do you determine what, what, I mean, how, he's, he's do you determine how the glory to be displayed? Does he even need us? Did he, no. Does he pre-exist the beginning? Oh, yeah. So uh, if God so doesn't need us, then why would God allow us to make any decision if he doesn't even allow? need us? Allow? Allow? Because, because, because allow is, is a little bit allow different than a, cause. Right. It really is. I'm talking about what y'all said. Allow is it's, different, it's, it's though. Still, it's, still, it's still tied into the whole ordaining thing. Not quite. Why not? Not quite. Whatever God allows is ordained. So then you're saying the only way God can get glory is something he do to us. No, the only way God gets glory is whatever he allows to be whatever done pleases to him. us. No, 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 no. What you're saying is that the way God's, God gets glory is through our suffering, is through our No, that's pain, not what I'm saying. through us being born with No, that is not what I'm saying. You know, with... With, no, with we're saying it can be through stuff, it can be through it can be through prosperity, saying, it can be through poorness, it can be through. We got to keep anything. in mind also, from the Old Testament times to the giving of, till the giving of the Holy Spirit, the Holy the Holy Spirit came upon certain individuals. I'm sure there's no discrepancy there with anyone in the Old Testament to give them certain powers to Samson, say things, Samson, for example, to do, do to exactly, what, yeah. whatever he had to do. So um, my whole point of this is constantly when. Okay, let's take John the Baptist. His whole message was repent. Repent. Turn. Turn. Repent. He's, he's trying to 
get to our minds. Repent. When the children of Israel were brought out, they saw miracle after miracle, ten to be exact, uh, not including the, you know, the, the rods things, you know, the, the little serpents. They witnessed all these miracles. They, walking through the wilderness, they witnessed more miracles in order to want to follow God. So that, I don't think that was God uh, flipping the choose switch and saying, choose me. I think he showed them, look at what you can get if you follow me. I mean, you're going to walk right. places. People are, right. I mean, they, the ark went before them and, I mean, the water went down. I mean, by, by, by them believing God. And I think believing God at his word I don't think you can go wrong by believing God at his word. But Who you want to take believe? it. But what I'm saying, when we, before we brought up the whole Macbeth thing, and we're talking about who was responsible, to me, that whole analogy was saying, if God wrote the script and the pedophile killed the little three-year-old girl, raped her, murdered her, and buried her, God wrote that into the script to happen. So ultimately, if God's going to hold him accountable for that sin... God created that act of the sin. And that is a different God Correct. that I worship. Well, that's not a different God. Well, it may be a different God that you worship. But you don't see what the God of the Bible says about what he does. He says he causes all things to work together for good. The prop, the but that's problem, not going for the good. Well, wait, hold on. You don't call it good. You don't call it good. You wouldn't have called what Joseph went through good. Would you? If you was in that, in oh, that time suffering? with Joseph. What, he had to go? No, but God used well, it. Wait, 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 wait a minute. And that's wait a different. Minute. Wait that's a, actually how different. How is that different? No, that's, no, what God I'm saying did, is what he said is different. Right. God can take something that, that, that someone intended for evil and he can make it good. Okay, I, so, know, I know y'all believe 9-11, God ordained it. But yep, you can't yeah. take yeah. So a new... God, so God used a pagan deity called Allah to give him glory. Did he not when, do it when, with he, when he penalizes people, did he, not do it he with penalizes Cyrus? his own people, his children of Israel, for mixing and merging with pagans. But God Jesus. also said he made Pharaoh's heart hardened. God said wait, he made wait, his heart hard. Wait a second. Did God not God, do that? Wait, wait, Was his heart ever going to be soft? Wait, wait a second. If but he, God made his <laughs> friend, <laughs> really. Wait, 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 wait a second. Wait God a second. made his heart hard. Wait, really? it starts out with Pharaoh saying, look at all the people. They're going to overrun us. And then he put out the decree to kill the young ones. And same thing, almost, you know, prophecy about what's going to happen with Jesus. But then, so he was already, he had a hardened heart. Just like, and then God, where, where was it I wrote down? Was it uh, Exodus 7, 3, where he hardened his heart, but his heart was already hardened. Who hardened it? If God said, I'm the one that did it, then we have to say what the Bible says. We right. We can't but, assume anything but else. Pharaoh in, uh, was it uh, Exodus 1, 10 through 13, it doesn't say God hardened his heart there. Pharaoh just said, hey, these people are going to overrun us. We got to... We would make the taskmasters harder on them. It says nothing that God hardened his heart there. And the Bible does say Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Okay. But that is after all this. It did not include God doing it. Exodus right. 10, what does it talk? Exodus 10, says the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. So yes, I agree okay. that his heart was hardened. Go Who was go, the go, cause of that? Go back to uh, now, it's interesting, Exodus. Talking, here, here, we, go have, back we, to, we have violated everything that the producers have asked for. I, I, I pray. <laughs> With, I'm, not, I'm not looking at you. With dude. all I'm grace looking, and I'm looking faith, faith that they can, they can make this project. But go work. back to Exodus 1.10. Okay. 1.10 through 13. And maybe we'll get to prosperity after that. <laughs> right. Yeah, maybe we'll talk about prosperity. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, I got this like literal translation, so I'll let you read what you got there. Wait, wait, what are you asking again? <laughs> what? Uh, Exodus 1.10? Oh, yeah, 1.10 through 13. Yeah. The Hebrew? Oh, Come let us deal wisely with them or else they will multiply and in the event of war they will also join themselves to those who hate us and fight against us and depart from the land so they appointed taskmakers over them to afflict them with hard labor and they built for pharaoh storage cities i'm not sure about those words there well that's fine that's that's the gist of it it's like they're coming down on them they're gonna subdue these people his heart was hard towards the people already so now we go to the new testament where it talks about where he gives them over to their wild lusts and their reprobate minds. He gives them over to that. They already had those. We, all, we are you, all you, like you, that. You're going all over the place. No, no, I'm not yeah, going all over, the place. over the place. No you're way. With Pharaoh. Here's, my, yeah. here's my question. You're dealing with Pharaoh, right? That's right. <laughs> okay. Who was not under law, by the way, because no law was given him. He can't him. be under the law if he's, if he's a Gentile until he gets saved. So now here's my question. Okay. Pharaoh's heart is hard. Is it possible, according to Scripture, that God uses people to accomplish his purpose and then tells us why he did it? Say that question again. Right. Is it possible for God to use people to accomplish his purpose 
and then tells us why in scripture why he did it oh like past tense this is what happened this is the story and this is why this happened and this is why I allowed this to happen basically yes that is always entirely possible Romans chapter 9 says to Pharaoh for this purpose I raised you up mm. for this purpose not because I saw <clears throat> you and your mama talking uh, or you and your baby mama talking and all this other kind of stuff and, and, I, and I knew you was going to do this and do that so therefore I just did this no 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 for this purpose I raised you up before you were even conceived in your mother's womb I had a purpose and plan for you that my power Pharaoh would be displayed in you right but let's look at the scene where Pharaoh was and the all the children of Israel living in Goshen. I have no problem with that. I mean, they were, literally, they were outnumbering. Okay. So he decided that he, they needed to beat them down, you know, into submission, or else he, they were fearing them. Now, we can say at the aftermath that, but it wasn't until it says here where God hardened his heart was after that particular. God says he, he hardens whom he hardens. Right. But that okay. was after he already had a hard heart towards them. Okay. Right. Let's, let's go to I'm Romans. Not, I'm not, I'm not arguing Romans that 9. point because his heart is already hard. He's a sinner. Right. Yeah. So, so he confirmed the hardness of his heart. He exactly. confirmed so, it. Can you turn to Romans 9? Romans 9. Romans 9. Okay. We're going to look at verse 10. It says, and not only this, but there was Rebecca also when she had conceived twins by one man, our father Isaac. For though the twins were not yet born and had not done anything good or bad, so that God's what? Purpose according to his what? Choice would stand, not because of works, but because of him who calls. And it goes down to say in verse 13, just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. What shall we say then? There is no injustice with God, is there? May it never be. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So it does not depend on man who wills or the man who runs, but on God who has mercy. And then it goes to verse 18. So then, he has mercy on whom he desires, and he hardens whom he desires. And it goes back to verse 17, for the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose, like he just said, I raised you up. And then he goes to say, verse 18, that he, does, he, he has mercy on whom he desires, and he hardens whom he desires. Right, but if we How look at that? what was in Exodus, it, his heart wasn't hardened until it says he was hardened. No, it was hardened because God said he raised him up that way. Let's say this. Let's say this. Uh, Genesis, I believe, is 15. When God comes to Abraham, mm -hmm. makes him a promise, mm -hmm. tells him what he's going to do. Yep. He tells, says what's, what's going to happen to his seed. Mm -hmm. He said that there'll be a stranger in the land that's Thank not you. theirs. For he how says, long? 400 years. Okay. So then, you know, then, then he says, then I will bring them out with great stuff and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. So then let's just say we can agree on this issue here concerning <laughs> God saying, oh, all right, this is something that I'm prophesying, which what you said, the word of God must come to pass. Right. So he already told Abraham that through your seed, this is going to happen. Right. I'm going to do this. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless all those who follow the, 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 uh, 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 the word that I'm giving you, and in you shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Mm -hmm. So then 400 years later, now we're with Moses and the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. He brings them out. Now, whether God hardens his heart, whether his heart is already hardened, it was prophesied. So I, what, what if, let me know if this is what you're saying, is that before Tim Craig was born, October 5th, 1975, there were things that God already prophesied about Tim that don't, it, don't, it didn't matter what Tim said or what Tim did with his life. God said this was already preordained this was already predetermined I'm going to now Tim still has to choose but I'm making all of his choices I'm writing all of his choices out so it don't matter it really doesn't matter Tim really don't need to live because he's a robot no that's not what I'm saying the, the Jeremiah was told by God mm -hmm. before you were formed in the womb I knew you Absolutely. I, I, and it, he's not talking about oh I knew what was going to happen this word no is in an intimate personal, relationship correct right. okay she said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and I ordained you to be a prophet. Ordained. Mm -hmm. Okay. I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations before I formed you. It's not like a choice. This is what I ordained you to do. This is what I called you to do. It's going to get done. You're, you're not, not going to frustrate my plans, but the Bible makes it clear 
Who can frustrate God's plans? Answer, nobody. You can, you can call yourself not doing what you don't want to have done to you, like Jonah did. See what the end result of that was. Nebuchadnezzar trying to kill all the babies to try to kill Christ, but what happened? He did not. It, so God's I'm saying plan that still went forth. That, 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 that was only Harry. certain people. Harry, yeah. I'm sorry. Harry. You can't say that that happened with everybody. What do you mean? <clears throat> you can't say that it, the average Joe on the street has the same thing over their life as far as what God did to Jeremiah. Jeremiah didn't have a choice. Well, wait, 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 wait. If, if God you, if said, you, well, but, but Tim, if you're saying, let's, if, you, if you're saying to me that, again, our choices supersede God's choice, we got a problem because God makes it clear that he will do all his good pleasure. He okay. will do everything that he has purposed. It but the only back. examples you have is Jonah and... No, I got more. We just we no, don't no, have no, no time. time. No, 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 no. Those are the only ones that you brought up then. But I'm saying, but what about Moses? What about Moses? He ended up, do, he, he ended up doing what God said he would not do. Again, you have his decree, you have his desire. Either it's one or the other. No, 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 it's both and. You keep, no, it's not it, both it, and. Hold on. God commands you and I to be like him, does he not? Yes. Is that a decree or is that a desire? Is that a decree or a desire? Does he decree every last one of us in this room to live perfect? Matthew 5, 48. Be ye perfect, just as your heavenly father is perfect. Is that a decree? Yes. That's a decree? Absolutely. So you're telling me, so you're telling me God decreed. Now, now let, me, let me just qualify this then. If God decrees something, this must happen. You must be like me in every facet of your life. So are you saying that that's the will of God then? No, no, no. I'm asking you. Yes, I, I believe it is. Okay, so he decrees that you live a holy, sinless life like him. Mm -hmm. Why don't you? Mm. Why are you quoting Choice, why you, choices? No, 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 no. You cannot have God's that. desires don't always exactly. come to pass. We're not talking about desire right now. I'm right. giving him decree first. I'll get the desire in a second. I'm asking you, tell me. But is decree his will? Yes You or have no? his decreed will and you have his desired will. He desires that I love my wife. He commands that. Do I love my wife perfectly? No, I do now, not. Now, you say you desire that he commands. Which is it? I, he commands okay. that I love my wife. That's a command. Okay. Uh, is me, that a decree? No, it's not. Well, l let me intervene here um, for the sake of time. Sure. Uh, let, let me close with this. After all of this that we've done and this heated discussion, I can still look at you two as brothers in the Lord. Same here. I, I really can't. Same here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same here. What saddens me is that you, you two are a rarity. You're a rarity in your in your camp, and I'm, I don't I don't I don't need to prove to any other reform reformist or Calvinist right. that that I'm a blood bought blood washed child of God. Mm -hmm. But to be called something totally different and completely opposite, mm -hmm. sometimes it gets a little annoying. I understand. So I appreciate the fact that you guys can disagree with us and, and disagree passionately like we've done today. <laughs> But when it's over, we're going to eat. <laughs> First of all, I want to say thank you, brothers, man. This has definitely been a great discussion. And then I'll just end here with my closing remark. You know, so many verses we can talk about, yeah. but for the sake of time, uh, when you look at Matthew 19, uh, we all know this is the story about the rich man asking, how does he get saved? Um, in verse 23, Christ tells him, Jesus said to his disciples, truly, I say to you, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man into the kingdom of God. And he goes down to verse 26 and it says, And looking at them, Jesus said to them, With people this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And, you know, I think this verse just deals with, you know, things that we want to happen. It cannot happen on our own accord. This meeting right here is only because God made it possible. You have mm. men that disagree. <clears throat> Without the Spirit of God, we would be, this would be bloodshed. So, uh, and, you know, and of course, my view that this verse right here is talking about with all things is possible by God, <clears throat> that deals with every topic we talked about tonight. Nothing is possible by us to do it on our own. That deals with healing, prosperity, election, God's will. None of that is possible unless God himself makes it possible. And that is just basically my closing remark. This whole meeting here was only made possible by God. And to meet you guys it was truly a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I definitely am blessed to uh, be a part of this.
you know, we don't know where this is going to go, um, who may watch this. But one thing I want to make sure and make clear that people understand is that all of us are brothers in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Jesus says by this, may all men know that you are my disciples. Not that you uh, dot your I's and cross your T's. Not that we agree on every single thing. I believe that the essentials are agreed upon. That by faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone, Mm -hmm. in him alone not Buddha not Allah not Mary not Hare Krishna no one but in Jesus Christ alone he says that we are brothers in Christ yep. and so I consider all these brothers here uh, these gentlemen on this on this stage my brothers in Christ we may have heated differences of debate as long as it does not uh, violate the gospel to where people <clears throat> are now hindered from hearing the truth of God's message uh, this is where we must agree on. And so, again, these are issues I know that can carry over uh, for hours and hours to come. But at the end of the day, uh, there has to be love. And I'm not talking about the wishy-washy, you know, syrupy kind of love. I'm talking about the, the love that Christ has for his disciples we ought to have for each other. Mm -hmm. um, you got 12 guys, man, you know, that Jesus was, was <clears throat> discipling. They all were trying to jock and vie for the kingdom, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, they matured and they grew. And I think a lot of this uh, debating in, in, a, in, a, in a negative sense, because it is, it is healthy and good to debate when you're trying to clarify issues. But I think uh, unnecessary debating and unnecessary wrangling just for the purpose of name calling and, mm -hmm. and, and, and being right? in the flesh and who's yeah. right and all this other kind of foolishness, that's not of God. What is of God is that we can at the end of the day say, that's my brother. That's my brother. We may not always agree on every single thing, but if I'm going to, yeah, we, uh, shit, please. Uh, and, but if we were to go out on the street and tell somebody how to be saved, we all know we're going to come from this book and say, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and Amen. thou shalt be saved. Amen. You know, the other issues we can work through later on by God's grace, but at the end of the day, salvation by grace, faith alone, Christ alone. Amen. And yeah, this was a blessing for me as well. And um, I think John 10:10. 10, 10, um, you know, the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy, but, but Jesus says, I've come that you may have life and life more abundantly. And, you know, I, 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 I just want us to be, and, and I believe that we are, we are all men who, at the end of the day, you know, we are, we're preaching life, we're speaking life, you know, everything that, that we're saying that's coming from this book is life, because this is a book of life, and God is a God of life, and, 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 and you know, we all live the born-again life and that born-again experience, and and on the other side, in the end, it's, yeah. it's going to be life that we, that we probably can't even put into words. Right. So, you know, when I look at a situation like this, um, and at the end, it's, it's peace, it's love, it's grace, it's, it's breaking bread, it's fellowship. And we can look at each other and say, we serve the same Messiah, we serve yeah. the same Christ. Amen. You know, that's fine with me. Yeah. You know, that, that's fine with me. And, and I'm, I'm happy and, and pleased. Uh, with what we've done, and I know yeah. God is going to use us to do, you know, many more mighty, wonderful, and amazing things Amen. for His glory, and His glory alone. Amen. 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 Well, what I have to say is, this was awesome getting together, yeah. and I'm sure everyone here would also agree that Paul praised the Bereans. I mean, just because he was teaching things, they looked and searched the scriptures. Yeah. to see if these things were so. And the only scriptures they had was the Old Covenant scriptures. That's right. So he thought this was awesome, that they looked and they checked. And the thing that we have to do when we discuss these things, and even on our own time, we have to dig in and look up definitions. We have to, I mean, we say sola scriptura by scripture, you know, interpret scripture, but we still need lexicons to look up words that mm -hmm. were written by man to interpret the word that's in the scripture, then they find new discoveries, as in the Dead Sea Scrolls that bring new light. So it's a constant growing process. So just, uh, but what I feel that the Lord is teaching uh, in all of this is to choose life, and we're to choose. Now, uh, what, two scriptures I have for you real quickly is Deuteronomy, uh, was it 5, 29? Oh, that this heart of theirs would be like this always, to fear me and to keep all my commandments, so that it might be well with them and with their sons forever. And the other uh, scripture to me that's really important is uh, John 20, 27. He says, then he said to Thomas, bring your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and thrust it into my side and be not believing, but believing. So he's showing 
just like we're all to read the scriptures, he's showing Thomas, check this out. Don't be doubting. Believe. So he's, he gave him the choice. He could have checked it out and said, I don't think so. But at the end, he chose. And I chose to be here with all you guys. Amen. I thought it was awesome. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Well, uh, I am definitely uh, honored uh, to be here and to be around all of you all. Uh, uh, the word of God declares, God declares my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Uh, and and I'm, I'm happy to say that, you know, we have people that are, you know, learned here. You know what I mean? We have pe people that, as you said, search the scriptures. And be it a matter of interpretation of what something says, uh, uh, it's not that God said that there was a lack of knowledge or a lack of information. It was people were not going after the knowledge that was available. And there is plenty of knowledge here that is available from God. And as I'm digging into the knowledge, you all are digging into the, the knowledge, I, I, I believe that we, we should all come to a understanding of God and who God is and what God does, what God allows, what God has preordained, what God has predetermined, so on and so forth. And I just count it an honor and a privilege again to be able to see something from a different mm -hmm. aspect outside of what I've already seen it. Uh, I, I believe that the day you stop learning is the day you start dying. Mm. Uh, uh, so I, 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 I really appreciate uh, the, the different uh, points of view mm -hmm. that everyone has. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Because, yeah. you know, I, I believe that there's always a way to learn and there's always a way that we can take things, uh, uh, always a way that we can add uh, uh, to our faith, not necessarily adding anything to the word of God, but adding to our faith of what we already know to make us stronger or a different way to how to see different things. And I pray that that did the same thing for some of you that were watching as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, and ultimately, like we've all said, I'll just end it with this, that God ultimately gets all the glory Amen. out of our lives. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Let's pray. Uh, Father, we just thank you and praise you for uh, this day, for this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And yes, Father, yes. we just thank you for this opportunity that we can gather together around your word. We know that the Holy Spirit was here present, uh, leading and guiding us. And so I just thank you that that what we did here, uh, Father, glorified you. And, and I thank you that I had the privilege to sit here with brothers in the Lord, um, for different viewpoints, d different angles, but nevertheless, brothers in the Lord, serving the same Jesus, serving the same Christ, serving the same Messiah. And so, Father, I thank you that you'll continue to grow us in your word. You'll, you'll continue to place uh, the right people in our lives that will add to and not subtract from us. Yes, Father, I just thank you and I praise you uh, for you alone because you are worthy to be praised for it is in you that we live and move and have our being. And so I just, I just, I, I'm, a, I'm on hands and knees just just crying out and, and, and being grateful and, and thankful and having a heart of joy yes. as, I, as I get a, a preview of what you're doing. I, I, we don't see the whole thing right now. Yes. We, we, we know that, that this is a preview to a coming attraction and we know that ultimately you alone will get all the glory. Yes. And so Father, we just thank you and praise you for this time mm -hmm. and for the time to come. We thank you for everyone watching, yes. that they're blessed and everything that they do, we give you praise, honor, glory, majesty, thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to eat. And y'all treat. Let's go check We can still be brothers in the Lord. Y'all stay treating, y'all. Would you consider this an argument or a debate or a discussion? Begin. I'm, asking, I'm going somewhere with this quickly. Uh, I, I, I would call it a debate. And here's the thing that we get nicked for because of, like I said, I saw you about to jump out your seat. I was about to have to protect him. There's some boy over there jumping out. He, he was on, he leaning like this. <laughs> I've been like this. Yeah, time. and I see all five of us seem to be very passionate people, yeah. but a lot of people take what we're doing and they'll yeah. say, oh, they're fighting, they're arguing. No, yeah. like you said, we're about to go eat, hopefully, and, and hang oh, out. We are eating. That's what But when it comes down to when you're discussing, <laughs> discussing things and having a debate, yeah. does, you know, in people's uh, personalities, you know, and especially men, People always want to look at this as a bad thing. And like you just said, I, I look at this as a blessing, man. Yeah, we agree mm -hmm. on right. some things. We disagree. And we got passion and heated, but he, it's still love. He, he said avoid the foolish disputes. Right. Amen. You know, See, so I don't like your designation war because usually there's always one who wants to be but the But it victor. caught your attention, didn't it? 
I won. <laughs> we, we, can, we can end there. Mazel tov. We'll give them that one. We, we can end there. We'll give them that one. We can end there. Amen. God bless and good night. Amen. Amen. <laughs>